we have you know, a lot of people in this state and in other states who are elderly who are looking at long-term care and how to fund that. Medicare does not cover the cost of long-term care. The average cost of care is about $5,000 a month. If you're land rich and you don't have much income and you don't have much liquid assets to spend, it's not going to last very long and you've got to find an alternate method. Long-term care insurance is not available generally if you have health issues or if you're over a certain age, if you have memory problems. Um, long-term care insurance is not a, an option. If you are young and you own property, buy long-term care insurance. Long-term care insurance is going to protect you and give you flexibility. Paying for nursing home care comes from private pay. Long-term care insurance for 100 days, Medicare will pay some or all of it, um, VA benefits and Medicaid as the, the safety net. Medicaid is what comes in and pays for long-term care when you run out of money. <laughs> Look at the amount of liquid assets that you have and determine how long your assets will last at $5,000 a month for you to be in a nursing home. If your answer is not as long as I will live, then you probably need to do some planning. Um, consider whether the person who is not going to be in the nursing home is going to have sufficient resources to stay at home and live. Um, and there are, are rules that allow for that community spouse to keep more stuff. And among the stuff that that spouse can keep is a home and the surrounding property, even if separated by a road, as long as it's contiguous, up to $500,000 in equity value. So if you've got a farm or attractive timber and you live in the middle of it, it can all be protected. Um, consider that no gifts or transfers can be made within five years of the time that you apply for Medicaid. So if you give a conservation easement today and you need you run out of money and you need to apply for Medicaid in three years, there is a penalty that is imposed and it begins to run when you're otherwise eligible, which means you're out of money, you're sick, and you're in the nursing home. Somebody's got to pay for that penalty period. And if you've given away a lot of money, that penalty period has no end. It can keep going forever. Should you purchase long-term care insurance? This is what the United Seniors Health Cooperative suggests, and it is a protection to you for your property. It is protection for you for your heritage to get this property to the next generation. If you can afford long-term care insurance and you can qualify for long-term care insurance, that's what you should do. People don't know it exists. Some don't think they'll ever need it. Some think the cost is prohibitive. Some are medically uninsurable. There are lots of different products now that incorporate life insurance policies into this. There are a lot of ways that you can get a long-term care policy that satisfies your needs and goals. Medicare coverage, um, and this is just very quickly speed, speeding through, but Medicare covers the first 20 days at 100% in a long-term care facility. Day 21 through 100, they cover with $124 a day deductible. If you don't have a Medicare supplement, then you have to pay the $124 a day for that 81, 80 days. Um, so you can't depend on Medicare to help very much. A lot of people also had problems with um, prescription medication. Medicare Part D is now in place. Remember that Medicare Part D has a hole, has a gap where you have to pay 100% of the cost of medication. And if you don't have a whole lot of income, but you have a whole lot of land, you know, there may be some options for you there. Okay. And you just need to um, make sure that you have consulted with somebody who can tell you what those options are. Um, VA benefits are an underutilized and misunderstood area. They are a safety net now that the Medicaid laws have changed. If you served in time of war for one day and you meet the qualifications, you can receive a check every month to stay at home, $1,700, up to $1,700. It has financial qualifications, but those, the um, income that you have is offset dollar for dollar by the amount of medical expense that you have. So if you have sitters coming in, if you are spending money for things that are not covered by insurance, then that's offset. Generally they want sixty to eighty thousand dollars. You can give away everything you have today and tomorrow qualify for VA benefits. They do not have that look back period and that penalty period that Medicaid has. I am not telling you to do that. Medicaid is a different program that covers more comprehensive things. The VA is a stopgap measure to give you money so that you can stay at home and afford more help. Um, 
you may be able to, to apply for and receive additional disability and indemnity compensation if you have a prisoner of war or a, um, a disabled veteran who died and it was a service-connected disability. There are, are lots and lots of people out there who are qualified for VA benefits who have never applied for them. There are people who have, um, who had ratings when they came out of World War II who have never been re-rated. Um, you know, if you were rated at 30 percent when you were 18 years old, your rating should have gone up a whole lot when you re reach 70. Your ability to function is a lot less. Um, if you've been rated for 100 percent disabled for 10 years prior to your death, your widow is entitled to a pension. If they were a prisoner of war, you were rated 100 percent disabled for one year prior to death, they're, they're entitled to a pension. And that comes with CHAMP VA, which is a source of coverage for ongoing long-term care. Um, Medicaid is a last resort. Um, it's one that many families find themselves facing, though, when mom and dad have had to go to the nursing home and all we have is this piece of property. Our choice may be to sell this piece of property. There are some, some things that you can do, um, and one of the things that you might have to do is get divorced. If you have a second marriage and you have adult children from each of those marriages, those children don't want their daddy's property going to play for that second husband's long-term care. So consider those things before you get married. Consider them again after you're married. Keep your plan current. Know what the rules are so that you have a level playing field and that you're not being advised by the social worker that works for the nursing home or the hospital about what to do because that's not a person that's working for you. Um, and these rules um, can be different in every state. Medicaid is a federal program. Each state administers it differently. Um, and there are, are different things that can be done in every state to qualify for Medicaid, different rules in every state. Um, generally, you have to be sick. You have to meet an institutional level of care. Um, and you can have no more than $1,809 a month. But in this state, you can have an excess income trust that goes to called a Miller Trust. Um, and most states have some provision for that as well. 